This morning I heard one of my favorite kinds of cases. You know what they are before your vows. Today I had someone who didn't trust the guy she wanted to marry even when he is sitting across the table from her. You got to see this. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Janika Adams and Rodney Martin. The two of you are 24 years old. You are in love, and you're looking to get married. But you have some issues, so you came to me uh, so I could talk to you about them. I had you take my compatibility test. I also get, uh, got your license with permission to tear it up, should I think the union is ill-advised. So, uh, Janika, uh, Ms. Adams, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why you two are considering marrying but aren't quite sure it's the thing to do? Um, we're considering marriage because I do love him. And it's just, we just have trust issues right now. It's just a lot of roadblocks. Who doesn't trust whom? Um, he doesn't trust me, and I don't really trust him neither. Okay. And Why don't you trust him? Okay. Well, just last week, I was in this room, and I found a condom on his desk. And we don't we don't use condoms so i did ask him but you do use birth control though right yes uh, <laughs> that don't sound believable to me let me tell you something ms adams mm -hmm. you start having children early before you're ready you are going to put yourself in a hole that you can't get out of you have to be able to be flexible you have to have leverage you have to have your life together before you right. bring another life into this world so please 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 whether you're planning on marrying him or marrying him or not, even if you do marry him, you gotta use birth control and you gotta right. plan for kids at the time when it's appropriate. You got your finances together and you trust the guy and all that kind of stuff. Please, 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 please. I'm gonna leave it there. Yes. <laughs> I say the same thing to you. You know what I mean? But it, it, it's it's you you you. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, um. Mr. Martin, do you care to respond to her concerns with respect to the condom she found? Uh, uh Ms. Uh, Ms. Tola, I'm a, I'm a man, and before and after, uh, just before dating her, you know, I've always been a man, you know, so, uh, my thing has always been 100% prepared for any situation, you know, and, So uh, just in case something just breaks in case, out, just in you case. read it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but he didn't tell me where it came from. Do you from. believe you're ready to get married, Mr. Martin? Uh, that now probably is my biggest issue, just f internally feeling like I'm 100% ready. Okay. What gives you pause? Do you, do, do you think maybe it's not so much her, it's, it's more about whether or not you're ready to settle down and be with one woman? Right. Is it a concern about finances? What, what's giving you pause? I would honestly say it's a culmination of everything. You right. Know? Uh, like I said, I, I, it starts with myself. Uh -huh. Me f honestly feeling like I'm truly prepared, just financially, uh, just mentally, if I'm really ready for uh, just 100% devotion to one person, and as well as, you know, just being 100% compatible with the person that I could potentially fall in love with. That's, gotcha. Both of those are just a, a collection of all of this. All, all, all of those issues. Right. Ms. Adams, why don't you tell me what kind of issues the two of you have with respect to communication and compatibility? Uh, when I have to find out things through other people, it's like, okay, so he went out one night, he didn't tell me. So the next day, girl was like, yeah, I seen Rodney, you know, out. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. He didn't tell me he was going out last night. I didn't think being out was necessarily a crime or something I have to but you say. Didn't you well, didn't are you two currently living time? together or are you... No, not you, you, you not, don't live together? Not, not right now. now. Don't, no. not, not, not now you don't live together. Now, let me ask you, Ms. Adams. Like, it, when I was dating my husband, mm -hmm. we weren't married yet, and I wanted to go out. Mm -hmm. I didn't call him and tell him I'd just go. Why, why is that a bad thing? I mean, just, just let me know what's going on. You know, let me know what, you, what you're doing, where you at, just in case something was to Do happen. Do you believe he's I'll ever be cheated like, on you? Oh, I know he has. I know he to explain that to me, w when did you find him cheating on you? And I'm okay. going to give you an opportunity to respond. Okay, so a month after we got together, we were talking about, since we don't use condoms, we were talking about, you know, cheating and... <laughs> a, a month <laughs> after we got well, together, we were, already, we were not using condoms. We Holy were already cow. friends. So you already Doesn't friends. matter! 
you got to really know somebody I before know, you I mix know. gene pools. And you can't just do it on the whatever. So right. you were together a month, you weren't using mm -hmm. condoms, and what? Well, we were, so with that, we were talking about, okay, just being faithful to each other. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, if you cheat on me, or if something happened, just let me know. And literally a week later, you know, he confessed like, yeah, you know, I did, I did cheat on you. Mm -hmm. So he told me he cheated. Listen to me. I, it, it, I don't know if this is gonna sound weird, <laughs> but in the first and, 30 and days. And he had unprotected sex with someone else, so. But he told you he it was did. the first, first seven days, you were just getting, you know what I mean? He, well, we were talking already. We were dating for a month, but... Oh, gee! But we, <laughs> but we oh, were already gee. friends for, you know... I, and I get that, and, and he was 20 what? 20. He was 20, 20. years 21? old. 21? You were just starting your very first exclusive relationship, mm. and he kind of slipped up. I, I, I mean, is it, has it been ongoing behavior for him, or was it just that one time? Well, with the incident last week, finding the condom, I, I don't, other than that, I'm not sure, because he doesn't tell me. You know, I ask mm -hmm. all the time, okay, so are you sleeping with people? Even though I feel like he is. Mm -hmm. Are you? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you believe she is? Do you trust her completely? I don't trust her completely, but uh -huh. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't... So what about the condom wrapper, though? I wouldn't, still, say like, that she, I wouldn't say that she's sleeping with anyone. I mean, you know, I just wouldn't I want you throw to that out there, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't just automatically assume that she is, but I don't trust her completely, no. Uh, Janika immediately texts me. Can't believe you have the nerve to share a chair with this girl right in front of my face, blah, blah, blah. If he was gonna cheat on you, he wouldn't mm. do it right in front of you. Uh, he was he, working. He, mm, you would. He you was would. working. Yeah. All right. Mr. Martin, you say one of the things that concerns you most about Ms. Adams is her insecurities. Can you please give me some examples of how they uh, display themselves and why it upsets you so? Uh, Ms. Tola, there was one, uh, an event that I had hosted, a, uh, a charity event, mm -hmm. and uh, I was the host. And so in between acts, I would run back and forth to the crowd and find uh, the next act or whatever, and uh, I was the MC, you know, the host. and. Um, Right in the front row mm -hmm. was a table that my family was sitting sitting at or whatever. So right after the act went, I just sat at the front row, the table, the front row, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I kind of shared a, a chair with a young lady who happened to be my cousin. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm down on one knee and I'm waiting on the act to finish up. Uh, Janika immediately texts me. Uh, what did she text me? She immediately texts me. Uh, it was family I can't and believe, friends. I it can't was family or, or, and friends. I can't believe you have the nerve to share a chair with this girl right in front of my face. Blah blah blah. And this man is working. I'm working. <laughs> He's trying to get up. MC, that's a tough job. You got to get up. You got to make sure people are there. He sat whatever was convenient. He wasn't trying to do nothing. I literally sat across from her. So he could have shared a chair with me. But it wasn't convenient. He, see, he plopped down whatever right in front of you. If he was going to cheat on you, he wouldn't mm. do it right in front of you. Uh, he was he, working. He, mm, you would. He you was would. working. Yeah. I, no, no, I'm sorry. I just... Yeah, help I got, yourself I out, Mr. Martin. I had to think about it myself, <laughs> like, man, that's crazy. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Um, you say she's terrible at reading body language. What do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, uh, we when we first met, we actually met at our job or whatever mm -hmm. together. We were coworkers first, then became friends, and gradually, you know, grew He's from too touchy feely. I remember Ms. Ms. Adams. Let the man He's speak. Too touchy feely. At, at our, at our let job, the man speak. At our job where we used to work. Uh, he you was know, the only guy. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> at, our, at, our, at our job, uh, I went, you know, I was one of the leading uh, sales people on the floor or whatever, mm -hmm. so a lot of people took direction from me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would uh, I interact with some of the young women that worked there with me, and I would tell them, I need you over here, I might need you over here. Can you run up to the cash register? Can you do this, do that for me? Or whatever. And we would just, uh, I, I loved the environment was so cool. Mm -hmm. he you know, women. and I was really friendly. And, you know, they love me there. Next move is out the door. You don't want to go there. Go ahead. You know, and they really love me there or whatever. And, uh, and there'll be times where she'd be, I guess, either she would be watching me from a distance or she would have somebody else watching me from a distance. And I would get messages like, uh, are you, uh, what's up with you and so-and-so, so-and-so, or why are you too close, you're too talking, you're too friendly, and you're smiling too much. Too much, yeah. You're too, you're too happy. You're yeah. too happy. You need, enjoy your job too much. Now, Ms. Ms. Adams, come here. 
you have a suspicious mind and you're frightened and you're insecure because everything he says to me makes absolute total sense. He but was, he was on flirt. the off chance that I'm wrong, you it, describe a situation where this man mm -hmm. was doing the inappropriate thing in that particular work environment. Okay, so it was of one of our co-workers. She came up to me. She didn't know that we were together. And she just, just went on about how she liked him. Oh, I wonder if he got a girlfriend. He cute. She didn't even care that he had a girlfriend. I didn't tell her that it was, it was me at the time. I just let her say everything that she needed to say. Yeah. So... <laughs> how does that implicate him? That's no way Because I told him, I'm like, yeah, she likes you. And everyone already knew that, you know, she liked him. And he knew that. But he made it seem like, you know, well, what he do you didn't want care. Him to, what do you want him to do, punch the girl? <laughs> no. I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand what it is you were looking for. How does that implicate him? How does that make him? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, all your life, mm -hmm. you're going to run into women who's going to either think he's cute, think he's nice, or like him. You're insecure, and you That's have an a insecurity. suspicious mind, mm -hmm. and you need to work on that, because it will kill you in any marriage or relationship. If you think that every time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you're gonna run around scared all the time and you're gonna run him away with all that nonsense. And right now, all I've heard is nonsense. I pulled up in church one day and I got a text message that said, uh, so you took that beat to church. Where did that come from? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Don't forget to join the conversation on social media. Go to facebook.com slash divorcecourt and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at divorcecourt. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mr. Martin, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. You're in here t saying that you might want to marry Ms. Adams. I want you to give me a 90-second sales job on why you believe Ms. Adams is the right woman for you despite whatever uh, concerns the two of you have between. Ms. Sullivan, to be completely honest, uh, she's gorgeous, uh, bubbly personality, she's ambitious, she's a go-getter, she keeps two or three jobs, she's a workaholic, <laughs> and uh, a lot of times she can be very supportive and motivating, and, it, and that's pretty inspiring, and those are some of the attributes that I typically look for when, you know, dating or whatever, so. Mm -hmm. That was a good job. <laughs> That, Mr. Martin, that was very, very good job. Okay, Ms. Adams, he set that bar, the bar pretty high here. Why don't you oh, give me a 90-second oh, sales job on why Mr. Martin is the man for you? Okay, besides him being handsome, um, I do feel like he's my best friend. Um, he, he's motivated, and I like that he's supportive of... He is supportive of me, I'm supportive of him. Um, I just, I just really like, despite of everything we go through, I like his personality. Mm -hmm. You know, I like how he treats me when he does treat me well. I like the time, every time we spend time together, it's just, you know, it's just like having that best friend, and it's the person that I want to marry is my best friend. Ah, uh, beautiful. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> when doesn't he treat you well? Give me an example when he doesn't treat, when, when you feel like he doesn't treat you well. Okay, so when we're out with other couples, I feel like I'm either his little brother or I'm a stranger. When we're around <laughs> couples, they are all lovey-dovey, and, you know, when it's just us and we see it, it's just we're just sitting next to each other, and, you know, he's not affectionate, he doesn't kiss me, doesn't hold me, doesn't hug me, doesn't do anything of that sort. So, mm -hmm. I don't... I don't want to feel like a little brother. Mm -hmm. Is that, that the worst of it? Um, no. Does he have a bad temper? Yeah, he has a bad temper. Do you feel that bad... he respects you as an individual? Are any mm. of those concerns yeah, present? Yeah, he, he told me he doesn't. He told me he lost respect for me. Do you recall that conversation? Do you recall telling her that? I do. I and what caused you to lose respect for her? I pulled up at church one day. Uh-huh. I pulled up at church one day, and I got a text message that said, uh, 
So you took that B to church. And I'm getting out, I'm, I'm getting out of my car at church by myself. And I read the text, hey, I, I, you, so you took that B to church. And I just could not believe that. First of all, I don't even know where that came from. Second of all, I couldn't even believe that you would say something like that as I'm going to Sunday school. Where did that come from? Oh, gosh. Um, it was, I guess, a joke. Um, someone told me that they see him take a female. And that's take. all it takes for you to just leap uh -huh. off the ledge and send him a nasty text. That's yeah. it. I got a whole lot to say. On Divorce Court, I hear it all. Do you need help with your relationship? He has told you that he does not do women's work. When it comes to doing domestic work like laundry, he's told me, oh, I don't do women's work. What do I have you here for? Ooh, we're gonna have to get you bodyguards to get out of here if you said something like that. Visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. You, my dear, are not ready to get married. You are not mature enough. You are not secure enough. You cannot put a ring on a fear and expect it to go away. And you're living in fear of something that is not really happening, not really going on. Mm -hmm. Every day is an anticipation of him leaving you one day when he has demonstrated nothing that would make me believe that he's gonna go somewhere. So if you're scared all of the time, if you don't trust him, why would you want to marry him? The marriage won't fix it. It won't make whatever, you know, Im imaginings that you have in your head go away. You're oh. going to drive him crazy. You're going to drive yourself He's driving crazy. Me crazy. Yeah, no, but you're driving yourself crazy. I you're the one in the driver's seat going off the cliff. Oh. And you're going off the cliff all by yourself. You taking that bee to church because somebody said something oh. to you. You didn't say, hey, you know, who was it? You know what I mean? Right. Well, that was like it's years not ago. Rational. I feel like over the years I have matured. You know, over the years I have matured. I know earlier this year that was a totally different situation, but I'm mature and I, and I know that what I've done, you know, was wrong. And I tell him that all the time. I just, I really do want him. I to... don't think you still. I still don't think you trust him. I mean, I, I mean, with the condom situation, you know, he still hasn't told the truth about that. And like I said, when I went through his phone, it's always, you know, he's always talking to a lot of females. Can I say this? Yes. Why would you even consider or entertain marrying a guy you don't trust? Why would you attach yourself to that, to that kind of life of desperation and investigation and searching and insecurity? Why would you want to do that at all? I don't understand that. Women come in here and do that all the time. I don't trust him, but I want to marry him. And you got to really believe. You know what I mean? You, you, you're signing on for despair. I want him to give me reasons to trust him. Continue to date him. You are not ready to marry him, and then you need to get a life of your own. You need to, mm. and if you don't start using contraception, <laughs> I do. I, you, I, <laughs> I don't want no baby having because it doesn't help anything. You got to be married for a long time and be have it together and know you're gonna stay together. But you need to work on yourself. What are you doing for yourself educationally or, or professionally? Um. I just got started a new job. I do want to go back to school. Um, that is a goal. I would do that. <laughs> I, 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 I would concentrate on who I am mm -hmm. and how strong I can be and how able I am. So whether or not some guy was with me or not would not be the most important thing in my life. Do you see what I'm saying? Because <laughs> the stronger you get, the less worried about him you will be. So th this thing. I won't, no, I won't, I won't leave that image with you. I'm just going to slip it in here and take it on with me. Uh, yeah, love her, take care of her. Don't cheat on her, but you need to grow up. This mm. matter is adjourned. Mm. What I was trying to explain to Janika was that before you become one of two, you have to be comfortable being one alone. Call us at 877-311-2222.